Hey everybody, this is Simon from Evoke College here. Just a little quick video to show you what I've been working on with spline lofts. So in UDK, what we can do is we can go along to the content browser, interact to classes, down to uncategorized and into spline actor, and get a spline loft actor. And drag it out here like that into the scene. And then what you can do is move it around like this. Come over here, drag that bad boy out like that, and do one more just for argument's sake. Cool. And then what you can do is select one of these nodes and hit F4. Come along here and look at these options. So I have the option to put a deform mesh on it. I'll go and get a sample asset to use on that. So, all assets, static meshes, and go and get this road one down here that I normally use. It's actually a wall, but I use it like it's a road. It's hiding, hiding, hiding. Keep going. Here you go, there you go, this guy. So, I'll select him, push him to the side and then go like that. Now he's still selected, so I'll put the content browser over here. And what I can do is go to additional nodes and say, hey, whack it in there. And there like that. Yeah, look at that. There you go like that. And you'll notice that it's not really coming out very well at all. If I get these and move them around, it's like, mm, it sort of works and it sort of doesn't. And it's like, oh god, what's going on? And for a long time, it confused me and I didn't know what was happening. And fortunately, I've been able to figure out what was going on. Let's select these. <coughs> so I control clicking them to select them all. First of all, it's, um, fix up the rotation on these. So that guy there around a bit. This guy here around a bit. And it sort of seems to be a bit more under control there, right? You're like, oh wow, I fixed it. But the problem is, if I keep moving around, at a certain point, it freaks out and doesn't work properly. It's like, oh wait, that's alright, Simon, don't you just need to fix the rotation up on that? And it's like, oh wait, gee, and it's really confusing, and you're like trying, oh surely if I just rotate it a certain way, it'll come right. Um, and what it is, is that by default, uh, what's happening is it's gimbal lock, because if I select all of these guys, oops, Oh boy, okay. Zoom in here. Control click him. 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 So they're all selected now. If I press F4 to bring up the properties, you've got this world X dir. You know, which direction is X facing in the world? And you've basically got it. Um, the x-axis lying along the ground in one direction. What happens when you try to turn against that axis horizontally is it creates this nasty flipping thing here like this, right? And the simple solution with all of your nodes selected is just to change the x-axis to zero, zero, 001. And it flips them, your mesh up on the side like that, but now you can go round and round it in 360 degree circles and you won't get any flipping. And better yet, we have this roll feature here we can use to straighten it out. So if I pop that away for a second and have a look at it now, what we've got is the static mesh under control. And it brings us to the second problem, which is the point behind all of my Unreal scripting I've been learning to do with the static meshes. So if I position this down on the ground, right, and go and play this, I don't know. oh no, there's no collision. I can't run up on it. <laughs> so it's like, oh crap, really? Um, 
Ah, but what if I want to do a racing game? I want to use the road. It's so annoying. Okay, so anyway, the point of showing you about Spine Loft and then how to get it to behave normally and then that it doesn't have any collision is that I've done a bunch of stuff in Unreal Script and made a custom version of the Spine Loft that does have collision built into it. So if I go to Actor Classes now with my scripts installed, you can see there's the Spline Loft Actor and here is Spline Actor Collidable. So I'm going to drag one of these bad boys into the scene and then put it back on the content browser. It's still got my um, the static mesh here selected. So it's just a handy one because it looks nice and sort of like a sci-fi road thing. Anyways, um, so now I'm going to make a couple of um, dudes with this. Drag that out there like that. Check the rotation. There we go. I'm going to do the same f fix up that I did on the other ones as far as putting a mesh on goes. So I'll apply the deform mesh there. I'll come down to the world extra and I'll switch it to 001. I will get the roll and set it to 90. There we go. And so it's behaving again. I'll close this for a second. And go back to my move tool. And click out a bunch of ones here. Maybe drag that around there like that. I could go on, but it, it's working. <laughs> so, yeah, the point behind all of this, of course, though, is to have collisions. So, if I lift that up there, that up there, like that, that should do the trick. I mean, you get the idea. So, now, when I, um, and I'll select all of them, so I'm doing them all in one go. When I go into the properties window now, with this custom version of Spline Off, you'll see there's some extra stuff in here called collision scale and collision spacing. So what it's basically doing is it's looking at the spline loft and as well as the mesh it's also adding in some invisible collision meshes. Basically just cubes and these custom XYZ values allow us to scale them so that they fit whatever mesh we've also put onto our spline. Now I did some tests before and I know that the size and spacing I want to fit this particular mesh I've put on is x 0.2, y 1, z uh, 0.1 like that and the spacing is about 30. So now if I run that oh look I can run up on my spline loft. Oh, so great now what's going on here? Let's go into here and say show collision. There you go. You can see now that indeed it's got these collision meshes distributed along the spine. Notice that they're following the tangent as well. And these are what allow us to be able to run up on our spine. So now we have an effective road tool in UDK. Yay, it's so exciting.